Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches, the scientific method. Today we're going to be going over the eight step process for the scientific method. This is where we're going to have your initial question, you know, looking at some research, you know, other background information, hypothesize, you know, that's kind of an educated guess, where you perform the experiment, that's where you set everything up, make sure you have variables set up correctly in, in your environment. You know, and then you look at, did it work? Analyze the data, hmm. And then check to see if your hypothesis was, was supported by the results of your experiment. And then report your results or publish your results. Hi fellow scientists. Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches the Scientific Method. So today I'm going to be going over the scientific method. And why is that important to us? Why is the scientific method important to us? Well, it gives us a process. It's a step-by-step -step method of inquiry. It provides a logical uh, plan for scientists to test our questions in a structured way that provides logical conclusions. You know, we're, we're always looking for cause and effect relationships within science. Um, you know, we can have a, a hypothesis that's supported, partly supported, or rejected by this experiment. You know, so what are the, the steps for the scientific method? Before I move on for forward, let me just read a little bit about the scientific method. You know, so the scientific method is a method of procedure that uses an organized approach to solving a problem or answering a question through a use of a hypothesis, experimentation, observation, and data analysis. So in a nutshell, that's what we're going to be going over. So the first step within the scientific method is ask a question. You know, I'm curious by nature. I want to, I'm looking at things, I'm wondering, you know, what's going on with that? How did that happen? I want to discover that cause and effect relationship in, the, in my area of interest, whether it be um, agriculture, with uh, mammals, with people, with chemicals, or, you know, just how things work. So part of that question is asking yourself, what do I want to learn more about? You know, I wonder what would happen if I did this? Or what do I want to test? Those are some very basic questions for the first step. So step two is research. Or, you know, for in order for us to design uh, experiments and for you and your fellow students to understand the deeper meaning and reasoning of your experiment, you know, you need to be, do some background research. You know, and, and part of that is, is brainstorming first, looking at who, what, when, where, and how, and then searching for experiments that relate to your question or your experiment that you already have. So did you create a question and that's already been answered? Go out and do some research to find out those, and then see if the, your procedures or your question is the same, or did you, they get the results that you were looking for, or do you want to dive deeper into that uh, question. You also want to look at your, your the techniques and the equipment that you need. You know, do you need to have a if you're working with a let's say a plant, do you need to have a pot, soil? Do you need to have water, and then maybe a a gauge for checking the the moisture of the soil. You know, uh, lamps and other things like that, or chemicals if you're working with that. And then. You may want to go and, and talk with others, whether it's um, your science teacher, your peers, uh, or fellow students, um, parents, or people in the scientific field, um, what you should study to help you understand your question. And, and that could be, you know, if, if you're working with plants, you need to go and, and look at, you know, things that deal with plants. If you're working with chemicals, you maybe you need to go talk with a chemistry teacher. So there's different things that you need to do. So do some background research first. And then along with that are the research techniques. You know, you have to identify keywords in your research question. Um, you want to use a table with standard questions, you know, and that's where that who, what, when, where, why. And then the history of similar experience. Research techniques and equipment, and then ask your teachers, mentors, and others. That sums it up. Step three is make a hypothesis. Your hypothesis is an educated guess or simple explanation made as a starting point for further investigation or experimentation. 
it must be testable, which means that can it be supported or rejected based on the outcomes of your experiment? Your hypothesis must include the independent and dependent variables. What is an independent variable? An independent variable is the part of your experiment that you want to test. A dependent variable is the outcome that occurs in your experiment and a response to the changing independent variable. And then usually a hypothesis, although not always, it is written as an if-then statement. Finally, it's based on existing knowledge. That's where the background research comes in. You see how everything's tying together? Step four, this is where you test with an experiment variables. You know, after your hypothesis is crafted, an experiment is designed to test it. You know, you have to set it up, whether it's going to be, you know, that, that potted plant, or do you need to have other things in there where it's a potted plant with a lamp? Uh, do you have chemicals that you need to set up? What are the pieces of equipment that you need to set it up? Where is it going to be dripping? Are you going to be boiling something? You know, so you need to have a Bunsen burner. So in science, things that can be changed are known as variables. And there are two types of variables, independent variables and dependent variables. In a science experiment, the, the variables that cause another variable to change is called the independent variable. The dependent variable gets changed by the independent variable if we look at the way things change. So, for example, if I wanted to see if something gets weathered, if the color changes, if I put a red uh, piece of fabric outside for a extended period of time, is it going to change color? Is it going to change to pink? Is it going to turn brown? Who knows? So, another thing with your experiment is that you have to take notes and record the control and the experiment. Now, what has been affected? How did it change? What were the variables, such as it could be sunlight, it could be temperature, it could be chemicals that are added, it could be, um, if it's with a plant, were types of insects that eat plants uh, put in there, you know. So, what is the cause of all of that? And then, so you're taking the note that the variables need to be very specific. In the dependent variable, a specific thing needs to be cited and such. There's that all that whole note taking, you know, and and the and then there's the control. So within the control, you may have let's go back to that that piece of fabric that I was talking about. You may have that piece of fabric inside of a box. Is it going to change you know, over that same amount of time? Probably not. Step five: Did the procedure work? You know, your hypothesis did not need to be supported to conclude that your experiment design was successful. As long as you get a consistent outcome, then your experiment successfully tested your hypothesis. When you want to take a look at it, did it support it? Well, if it's no, you need to go check your setup. You know, check all of your set steps. You know, look at the the equipment that you use, um, the different types. You know, did you consistently use a 40 watt light bulb for your lamp? Did you have a, a con constant temperature using the Bunsen burner? You know, and there you need to. This is where you make adjustments if necessary. Then you go back after you've readjusted everything to meet what your variables and your requirements are and then restart the experiment. If your procedure worked, then you continue to the next step. Step six, this is where you analyze data and draw conclusions. If your procedure worked, then it's time to analyze the data. You need to chart your data and graphic, look for patterns and correlations, perform statistical analysis, especially into the higher grades and such. And then, you know, were your results significant or insignificant? You know, who that's this is where you do that statistical analysis. Were there any possible s sources of error in your experiment? You know, if there was, then you need to make sure that you state how the, the sources of errors may have changed the outcome of your experiment. Next, you draw your conclusions. Did the results support your hypothesis? Step seven: Was your hypothesis supported or not? Well, if your hypothesis was not clearly supported, you need to revise your hypothesis or make a completely new one and repeat the process. You know, science isn't pretty sometimes. You know, you have to always follow uh, expectations and often we don't get it right the first time or the second time or how many other times, you know. It, it, it's just a process that requires patience and great problem-solving skills and you need to make sure that you're meticulous in what you do. Another thing too is that you need to make sure that you know, hey, is your experiment repeatable? You know, just because you a result running it once, did you get it again? And can somebody else take your notes 
and your plan and your hypothesis and set everything up along with the same equipment with the same variables and repeat and get the same results that you do. Step eight, report your results. You know, all scientists must be great record keepers. Your results must be written in simple, concise way that outlines not only whether or not your hypothesis was supported, but also how your findings fit with current research. You know, uh, you have to write it out, you need to outline was your hypothesis supported, do your findings fit with current research, how can your new knowledge be applied to the real world, and who would benefit from that, and then what new questions did you come up with as a result of the experiment. You see how that goes? You start with a, a question, and then you run your experiment, and then you generate new questions. All right, let's recap the eight steps. One, question. Two, research. 3. Hypothesize. 4. Experiment. 5. Did it work? 6. Analyze data. 7. Was your hypothesis supported? 8. Report the results. As you work on science projects, you're going to use you know, some of these steps. You may not use others. It may be a little bit different. Go with what you need to do to complete your science project. Thank you for watching Mr. Woods Teaches the Scientific Method. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And remember, to be a scientist, all you have to be is a person that does science.